All right, so I'm going to go over the, um, the uh, mass and energy balance for the ammonia production system. So we've got a basis of one mole. We have an inert coming in and the inert coming out. And everything, all the streams are stoichiometrically proportional. So we see one, an inert coming in, inert coming out, ammonia coming out but no ammonia coming in. So we can't really do a mass balance on the ammonia from the start. We'd have to do a, a mass balance on the inert. And if we do that, we have x i naught is equal to yp times n2. So we can rearrange this, say n2 is equal to this. And then that's one, that is just, that's just one equation. And we can make another, we do a balance on the recycle stream and this uh, feed stream. So we, we do that here. So we just uh, isolate N1. We know N2. We, we just say 4N1 plus N2 is equal to all this added, which is 4N1 times 1 minus YP, 1 minus FSP plus 1 minus yp times n2 it, and plus this one mole of feed. So we s isolate n1, we solve that. n2 is already solved. So we have to, I guess, the purpose of this inert, of this uh, purge stream is to prevent buildup of inert inside the reactor, the condenser, the cooler, um, the distillation units, just to prevent buildup inside those, because then that'd be a would be like a would be like a batch, and that's not what we want in a continuous continuous uh, problem. So in task one, they just ask us to do a mass balance. So we kind of just did it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the energy balance because it's similar. So we have, now we have to look, actually pay attention to the cooler, pay attention to the condenser. So we have 723 Kelvin, 253 Kelvin, and this heat of uh, vaporization for ammonia coming out because it's the only condensable species. So our reference state is going to be at 723 Kelvin and the gas phase of all our uh, species. In order to make you know, the problem much easier. So we'd set up a little table like this where we have our species right here. N2, H2, inert and ammonia coming out of the reactor because the reactor produces ammonia. So our reference was at 723 Kelvin. So N, N what's coming in, it's all, all the uh, specific enthalpies are at zero because it's at 723 Kelvin because it's because energy is a state function. We can say that it's zero and just like calculate a path similar. I'll explain this in a bit. But it's just like a pathway from start to end. It doesn't matter how you get there, you just have to calculate the little changes in the enthalpy and add them all up to get here, your final spot. So you have moles in times your specific enthalpies of each component. And then you have your moles out, which is that which is just is equal to your moles in times your specific enthalpy. And the change in uh, the change in enthalpy, total enthalpy, is going to be H H1 times this N2 out, and then H2, H hat 2, where these are all in, um, they could be in joules per mole, kilojoules per mole, depends on how you, uh, how you convert. So this is going to be H2 times 
the uh, amount of moles of hydrogen gas, H3 times the amount of moles of inert gas, H4 times the ammonia gas. So these two are uh, multiplied plus these two multiplied plus these two multiplied plus these two multiplied. And this is all minus these two multiplied, these two multiple, or, um, these two multiplied plus this multiplied plus this. And this is all going to be zero. So that's why a reference state is at the inlet stream to make everything zeroed out easier. So it's just this, the uh, summation of our moles of our species times its specific enthalpy. It's just a summation of that. And we also have to include the heat of vaporization for our ammonia. So everything, these three are easy to calculate for your H, your specific enthalpy. You just use a integral from 723 Kelvin to 253, and you use your heat, um, yeah, your heat capacities, which are given. It's all given. So we got N2, or H1 is for nitrogen gas, 723 to 253, specific enthalpy 29.1. And you have to use Kelvin because right here, I mean, it's a Kelvin. If it was degrees Celsius, you'd use degrees Celsius. If it was in Rankine, you use Rankine. So you do that. It's basically 723 minus, or 253 minus 723. And you get a negative enthalpy, which you would expect because it's using, it's losing heat. It's cooling, right? So you lose heat, negative enthalpy. The same thing for H2 and its heat capacity, 28.6. Same thing for H3, which is our inert, which are our um, heat capacity of inert. Oh, sorry, specific enthalpy of inert. So it'd be seven, our initial temperature minus final, or, I mean, 253 minus 723 times the, uh, the 20.7. And we also get, we get negatives for all these because they're all losing, they're all losing uh, heat. So this H1 goes here, H2 goes here, H3 goes here. And we and now we we need our H4, which is isn't that bad. So you have ammonia gas going from 723 Kelvin to its because it's being condensed here. It's being condensed here. So it goes from 723 Kelvin to its its um you could say it's a dew point where the first dew drop of ammonia gas is formed because of the change, change in temperature. So you have to look this up and they don't tell you the, uh, the condensing temperature. And we're assuming all this pressure is at one atmosphere. So we'd say 723 Kelvin goes to the, the uh, boiling temperature, 195 Kelvin. And it's a gas all the way. So you have to look at ammonia gas, 723 Kelvin, ammonia jump to this spot. I just showed this spot for uh, <clears throat> just to have an idea, I guess, of the, look, the steps. You don't really need this step. You just jump to the, to the uh, temperature. So you say ammonia gas goes to 723 Kelvin, ammonia gas goes to 253 Kelvin. When your gas goes to 195 Kelvin. So whenever you do this, integral will be 723 to 195, and you use the uh, heat capacity. But because it vaporizes, you also have to include the heat of vaporization from gas to liquid. And this would be a negative heat of vaporization because a gas is, is um, it's much more, it has more kinetic energy than, than a liquid does. So it'd be losing that kinetic energy. So you could think of it that way. It would be negative for that reason. And once again, look at your units, kilojoules per mole. This this change in temperature, uh, this integral is going to give you joules per mole. So just combine that, and you'd get negative uh, 
10.2 joules per mole of ammonia. So that's our H4 value here. So now you can actually you can actually solve the problem. You have it depends on what basis you use really. So say let's say I kind of split up the code just for this um, for the video. So I have a hundred point two point six fractional conversion. <clears throat> so you'd have 100 kilomoles going in. You'd have a number of ammonia moles right here being coming out of the reactor. So I used a mole basis, one mole basis, I had 0.375 moles of ammonia here. 2 moles of inert, 0.375 moles of hydrogen gas, 0.125 moles of um, nitrogen gas. It's kind of hard to, to read, but um, so you just you just multiply 0.125 moles of nitrogen gas times the H1 value, which is this number. Multiply hydrogen gas 0.375 times this H2. <clears throat> two moles times two moles of inert times the uh, heat capacity uh, specific um, change in enthalpy of H3 and then this H4 times 0.375 so you'd get you get because this is in moles and this is in joules per mole once you multiply H1 times a mole uh, you multiply moles of nitrogen gas times this number, which is joules per mole of nitrogen gas. Units would cancel to give you joules. You have moles of hydrogen gas times the, the number, specific, the uh, specific enthalpy, which is in joules per mole of hydrogen gas. Units of hydrogen gas cancel, left with joules. Same thing with inert, same thing with ammonia. So once you multiply these and you do a summation of all these values, you get you get a uh, you get your units in joules, and we chose this reference spot, the reference state, gas seven twenty three Kelvin, in order to get this zeroed out. So it would just be this summation value minus this summation value, which is a zero, right? That'd give you, um, that'd give you an enthalpy in joules, but you want that in joules, in megajoules, in order to find the cost. So in my code, I mean, our, my function I called utility cost. I basically, I, uh, let's see. Did the the H1 values, H2, H3, H4, and this is in joules per mole. All in joules per mole. This is the specific the heat of vaporization. It was in kilojoules per mole, but I converted it to joules per mole. This times a thousand. So twenty three point three five times a thousand gives you that. And this would be minus because the gas to liquid. And this is where I convert my from kilomoles per mole. I'm gonna make sure you have constant units. This is again where I defined I did the, the mass and energy balance. This is the moles coming out of the reactor. N2 out, H2 out, inert out. Inert out is, is the same. And um, it's the same as inert in, because it doesn't 
take place in the reaction. And N1, let's see, what is this? N1, okay, yeah, that, that defines most of them. I'm sorry. When I have total joules. So this specific enthalpy of H1, which is in joules per mole nitrogen gas, times the N2 out, which is in moles of, if you want to be specific, you could just say, you could say moles for nitrogen gas. That cancels. So this is where I said the summation, the summation values. I didn't include the uh, minus zero here because this, it doesn't take, it doesn't really affect it, it's just zero. So once you get this value, you convert it to, you'd have to convert the joules to megajoules. So a joule, it's a it, uh, megajoule. One megajoule is equal to 10 to the 6 joules. So just, this is in units of joules here. Total joules divided by 10 to the 6 joules gives me megajoules. And then I had, because this enthalpy is going to, if you, if you look at this, this uh, enthalpy is negative. I just did the absolute value, so I wouldn't have a negative negative money. It'd be total megajoules times 17.68 dollars per megajoule. So that would give you cost per hour, and it's per hour because our uh, our basis was 100 kilomoles per hour. So that'd give a cost of 52,386 dollars per hour for a hundred kilomole production um, feed stream. So I'm gonna go over the code um, here. So I just kind of split it up in like the tasks that were asked. So it's easier to explain. So here we have Task one uh, and one. So this mole is just one. It's a one times this, one times this, one times this. And we just include it mole because it can be, I don't know, the basis can be changed. So it could be one, four, five. So that's why we didn't want to hard code that in. So we'd have feed, which is um, all this added to feed. And we have our our balance on the purge, on our inert sorry, balance on the recycle and feed stream. And then we these are all in inputs, all outputs. We just kinda we got wrote this down in terms of in terms of our our mass balance. So we put in input this, this comes out. We have optimization. Let's see. Here we go. So My classmate worked on this part. This this previous section is just what I stated. What I stated here, doing our balance and that. So here's where you act where we actually uh, use optimization. Get our graphs. Okay. So he goes over the. He, he sets one one point constant. Uh, in this case, he one of these three values sets one of them constant, and he does a max 
he tries to uh, optimize. He does optimize. Um, he optimizes one of his values. Did this three times. So if you want to see it run, it's the same. Let's see. Ones. Point six. And it's up there. But it gives it shoots out these graphs and this is it's showing the real ones. One point two point six and point one. Okay. So you can see for our first graph. First graph where he op tries to optimize one of the inputs. First input, second graph optimizes our second input, and optimize our last input. And here's Here's our energy. And here's the energy, um, the security cost. I kind of explained that already. So I'll just get to our loop. Or actually, he, uh, he made it run. This is just for explanation purposes, but here you go, actually, it's already here. It's just the one. One, um, one section. We have our loop here. It just this, does the same thing as this. And let's see. If there's anything I should go over? Well, our test case, we had 100 kilomoles and one mole. I already showed that. And let's see. Well, this app, this applies to, uh, I guess the real, this applies to the real world because um, you're always going to have an error, an error in any feed stream. It's unavoidable. You're going to have, I guess, in most cases, nitrogen because you're going to, I guess, for a combustion reaction, you'd have excess air. And you'd have nitrogen in that air, a mixture of nitrogen. So you'd need a purge, or else you're just going to have buildup. Unless it's, uh, unless you don't have a recycle stream. You, you usually have a purge with a recycle. You don't just have a purge. Or else that would be called a product stream. Um, Pay attention to units whenever you're dealing with uh, with a uh, conversion multiplying. Always pay attention to units. And let's see, that's it.